Our last topic when it comes to supporting rotating shafts is the use of bushings or sleeve bearings. Bushings depend upon the frictional sliding of contacting surfaces. They are not actively lubricated. And so you can think of them as perhaps boundary layer lubricated or pure frictional sliding. How do we choose whether we want to use bushings, journals, or rolling contact? Well, there's no doubt journals, if cared for properly, will last the longest and will have the lowest coefficient of friction, but you need a lubricant for them. You need to be able to supply that lubricant and you need to filter that lubricant. Rolling contact bearings have intermediate life and are simpler to utilize. They also take up less axial space. Bushings have the shortest life because it is all about frictional wear. So let's take a look at a block and let's imagine that this block is sliding on some surface and we apply a downward pressure to that block, call it P, and it is applied over a cross-sectional area A, and that cross-sectional area is the same on the top as it is on the bottom. And so we have this bottom surface here, and we are going to apply a force to this block, and the force that we will apply is going to be to overcome the frictional force, and you know that that frictional force is going to be a coefficient of friction times the normal force. Well, instead of mu, we're gonna use F. And in fact, we're gonna imagine that this is sliding, so we're gonna use the sliding coefficient of friction. The normal force is just going to be equal to the pressure that we apply times the cross-sectional area. And so this force over here to keep it sliding, the force we apply to the block is just the dynamic coefficient of friction times the pressure that's acting between the two surfaces and the cross-sectional area over which that pressure is acting. So what happens is that as you continue to slide this block, you would wear part of the block away. You would slowly wear material away and the height of that block would become a function of time. So when we are applying this force FSPA and we move this block through some distance, let's just go ahead and imagine we move it through some distance S, then the work that we do on that block against friction is going to be equal to the sliding coefficient of friction times the pressure times the area times the displacement over which we do that work. Now, if this is sliding at a constant velocity, let's give this a velocity vector now, V, then our displacement is just going to be equal to V times T, the time over which we have that constant velocity, and the work is just going to be equal to the sliding coefficient of friction times the pressure times the area times V times T. The material removal, you can think of this as a grinding or a polishing operation. If we remove a depth of material equal to W, then W times A is the volume of material removed. If we look sideways on that block, and you know that we have a cross-sectional area associated with the wear surface, and over time we remove a depth W, then we have removed a volume equal to W times that cross-sectional area. This W times A is going to be proportional to the work that we are doing as we slide the block. So we get rid of these cross-sectional areas and we find that the amount of material removed, W, is the depth of material removed that is just going to be given by FSP times V times T. And what we end up doing is we replace this FS instead of a sliding coefficient of friction, we end up replacing that with a material constant which we will call K. Well, I mentioned this factor K that shows up in here, and Shigley provides a table that gives you a number of these factors, and it is provided by a company called Oils, which made these special bushing materials, and so they, uh, as an American comp company, were allowed to come up with wacky units. So once again, we find very strange unit. This wear factor K has the dimensions of, of inches cubed, minutes, divided by pound force foot hours. The dimensions of the PV limiting ratio over here are PSI feet per minute. And so, boy, you have to be careful when you're trying to sort out the calculations to determine wear rates. 
I would personally rather just do it all in metric units. The tables that we end up using in the Shigley textbook are tables 12, 7, 12, 8, and 12, 9 to help us uh, accommodate design of bushings. But let's just move a little bit further now and talk about other factors that show up. It turns out that they want to incorporate different types of motion. So we're going to use other factors to modify this wear term. So the wear is going to be related to something called F1 times F2 times K times P times V times T. T is the time in service. Pressure and the velocity are the use conditions. K is a bushing property. And F1 and F2 correspond to operating conditions. And we will find examples of F1 and F2. F1 we can find in table 1210. And F2 we get out of table 1211. So now we have this new equation for the wear, and we want to imagine applying that to a rotating shaft. So we're just going to go ahead and imagine a shaft, and we have embraced that shaft with a sleeve over some length L. The shaft is of diameter capital D, and this shaft is rotating at a speed n. You know that if you looked down that shaft, so it's in frictional contact with this sleeve, and if we had a load applied to that shaft, you know that we would have a pressure distribution that would be parabolic. Acting on the bushing, if we are supporting this through a frictional bushing sleeve, then we would want to know the wear rate of that bushing. And so we want to be able to use this wear equation where we have K, F1, F2, P, V, and T. And so we have to figure out what the V is if we have a rotational speed N. It turns out that that V is just going to be pi D N over 12, where D is our radius in inches. N is in revolutions per second. We convert that revolutions per second to radians per second. We also have 12 inches per foot. And so this is how we end up getting the dimensions that we need for this V. The average pressure, P, is just going to be our force divided by the diameter of the shaft times the length of the bearing. That's the same thing we did for journal bearings. And so our W is just going to be equal to F1, F2, K times F pi N over 12 L, all of that stuff, times T, which is the service time. Now it turns out that the maximum pressure is just equal to 4 F over pi DL, and so in terms of max pressure, we write this wear equation as F1, F2, K, F, N, T over 3L. And the reason we have to do this is because this parabolic pressure, the wear function depends upon the magnitude of the pressure. So we get uneven wear, but if it starts to run ahead in one area, then the pressure will increase in other areas. And so you get this oscillating sort of change in pressure, which makes the wear rate more uniform. But nonetheless, we want to express the wear in terms of the maximum pressure of the distribution. So it turns out for design, it is recommended that your L over D ratio, so your sleeve length divided by your shaft diameter, is somewhere in the range of one half to two. 